This is Show Up as a Leader, a show from People Forward Network, helping you maximize your positive impact on the world by becoming your best, fully authentic self. Hey, everyone. It's Rosie. I'm super excited to have my friend Chris Johnson bring her new series, The Leadership Pause, to the show. In this series, Chris is going to unpack what it means to be fully human and access the best of who we are as leaders. And each episode is going to include stories, what she refers to as nerd science, which just is music to my ears. And she will always give a deliberate practice that we can try on at the end and apply so that we can show up as more embodied learners and leaders in our life. Take a listen. I got my head bit off. Tales of emotional regulation. Not long ago, on a call with a vendor while attempting to articulate a situation that had gone south, I was interrupted midstream with a torrent of words, an imaginary finger angrily wagging in my face. The voice booming through the speaker on my phone was saying things like, I can't believe what you're telling me. This isn't what we agreed to. It's inaccurate, not to mention unfair. What we need to do is, and what you need to do is this. Now, if you've ever found yourself on the receiving end of a rant, you know the kind of experience I was having that particular afternoon. Stunned, agitated, outraged. Someone was yelling at me, at work, no less. I was not happy. And like me, you likely reacted in the face of a rant too. I felt attacked. My heart rate increased. My jaw tightened. I could feel it just like right now. I felt defensive and I thought, what the? While the adrenaline in my body had me primed to take action. In fact, I was straining to contain the words ready to pop out of my mouth. How could you? You don't understand at all. I am done. We had an agreement. When we're stressed by an external event or comment, we react. It's how we're biologically wired. We may feel triggered by something outside ourselves. We might become defensive or expressive with an obvious outburst of feeling. We can find ourselves in a defensive dance of excuses or blaming, trying to make sense of it all. We likely notice in some way that we're shutting down, distancing ourselves from the experience with either stony silence or a resentful resolve. Or we may simply think, get me the hell out of here. Believe it or not, your reaction can open a secret doorway into your own internal mindset about the situation and provide the key to handling it well. Trust me, I've learned the hard way. Mindsets. Our mindsets reflect our accumulated lived experiences over time. Those experiences that shape our attitudes, our beliefs, and our actions. Largely influenced by our first family, but also then as we go to school, as we go to school longer, as we get into the workplace and the workforce, we're shaped and shape in turn all of the people around us. We're shaped and they're shaped also by interactions with one another. These mindsets that we hold reflect actually what we care about, though we're often not aware of that at all until we find ourselves triggered and reacting, however great or small that is, right? We can resist these perturbations, or we can open up to the reactivity with the willingness to examine our own common sense about the experience and how we've constructed our own way of thinking and behaving in such situations. In my case, the rant opened up a review of my mindset about how we treat people, especially at work, and come to find out I have a strong sense of how we ought to treat people at work with dignity and respect and trying to practice patience. And that in a sense of fairness, those things really came up for me. I also know that from experience, when I simply react, in other words, I let my biology run me, I let my amygdala be hijacked, and I'm in a state 
and acting it out, the results can leave me in a bit of a mood. Or rather, if I'm honest, a lot of a mood. Moods that aren't necessarily effective in offering an appropriate response in that moment. Resigned, resentful, revengeful even. Maybe you've been there. When I react from those reflexive moods, I have to ask myself, does my reaction work in the moment to clarify the joint concerns that we have, to move the situation forward, to stay in the conversation? Mm, Often, not so much. Not when I'm in that kind of mood. Chances are good that none of these typical reactions work well, despite the fact that they're actually hardwired in us by design, first and foremost, to keep us safe and out of harm's way. Safety and skill. Really? Safe and out of harm's way? This was simply a day-to-day work conversation. Safe? Really? Yes, safe. You and I both know that situations like these happen all the time, everywhere, even at work, especially at work. As human beings, we're wired to seek safety as well as connection and respect, even at work, especially at work. The degree to which a person feels safe is largely based on their previous experiences, which influence their mindsets about, well, just about everything. Remember, those mindsets have been shaped all along, and they bring that shaping, that mindset we all do, to the workplace in the moment where we're having this thing happen. With Iran, I didn't feel safe in that relationship or working together at all. That was the straw for me. And feeling unsafe, like I did in that moment, we can't think clearly. Our emotional brain is on high alert. We're not going to be able to come back to center if we stay in that state and feed it. And feeling unsafe, we then compromise our concerns, we settle for less, and we tolerate more. Feeling unsafe, we avoid necessary conversations to move work forward, to be an effective team member. When we simply react in situations that are difficult, we all suffer. However, If we remember that our mindsets reflect what we care about, often revealed when we find ourselves reacting or triggered on high alert, it's then that we can turn a triggering situation into an opportunity to settle, to settle into what we care about even further. How? Well, this is a great place, as always, to share practice. So here's this month's practice for you to try on. And remember that I'd love to hear from you on the other side. This month, anytime you find yourself triggered and reactive, I'd like to invite you to pause for 30 to 60 seconds. And in that pause to notice which reaction seems to be a little bit more typical for you, your signature reaction. Is it the obvious outburst? Is it super silence? Is it a defensive dance with excuses, etc.? Is it a resentful resolve? Just simply notice. We all have typical tendencies under stress, so don't sweat it. Noticing your signature reaction will help you recognize your own first move so that you can shift it, right? Then after you pause and notice, then take that second deep breath Research tells us that it takes about six seconds with intention to shift gears from reacting to responding. So you're taking that next deep breath. And as you breathe, your rational mind will kick into high gear. The neurochemicals are starting to settle since they were hijacked just before. Then take that second or third deep breath. Research indicates it takes about six seconds seconds or so to shift gears from reacting to responding when we're intentional. And breath will help your rational mind kick into gear. Since it was just recently hijacked, you need to allow it time to settle so the neurochemicals can settle. Because now what you're doing is you're working to transform this reactive moment where you're simply trying to cope into a transformative moment that can really work for you. And believe me, These seem little. These are super powerful micro moves that you can make. Then drop your attention down to your feet and quite literally 
put them in your feet right now. So feel your feet in your shoes, rolling around on the floor. If you're barefoot, feel the texture of the floor beneath you and drop your attention to allow your energy to move downward. You feel it shifting. Your mindset will shift with it and keep breathing. And do that for three or four cycles of breath. And then if you can, get outside in nature to support your nervous system in settling. Nature is a great resource for us because the natural rhythms of nature typically help our psychobiology settle. In fact, you might want to check out last month's episode, Resourcing Energy Renewal in Nature, since nature's a typically untapped resource that's both cost-effective and convenient. So once you're outside, you've paused, you've taken that second or third breath, you've shifted your attention down into your feet, so you're getting more grounded, and now you're hopefully outside. You can do this inside too, but outside is great. So once you're outside walking or sitting to bask in the sun, allow yourself to notice how your body is settling. might take your mind a little bit longer, but it will settle if you Don't feed the beast, as I like to say. You don't feed a story about what just happened. You just simply stay in the raw experience of the moment. Ask yourself a few clarifying questions. What actually happened here? What most irritated me? Was it the tone? Was it a broken promise? Was it that I didn't feel heard? What do I really care about here? And really listening deeply for that sense of care. So you want to let yourself spend a little bit more time. Like, what do I really care about? What am I miffed about? What actually am I reacting to? And as your mind has settled, you'll be a little bit more able to allow yourself to notice what's coming up for you. So when it feels right to you, and you'll have a sense if you're trusting yourself into the rhythm Figure out who you might like to share your experience with, because we know that sharing our experiences with a trusted other can help us gain clarity for the next best action step to take. Now, mind you, this sharing with a friend is not gossiping and re-inviting the story to start all over about what so-and-so did or how they triggered you. None of that. It's really an experience with a trusted other to say, do you have a few minutes? I had this experience. I'm trying to work through it and figure out my best next step. And I want to take responsibility for my emotional part of this and what may or may not have happened. Could you listen for just a few moments and give me your honest feedback? Thanks. Then you pause and you choose to let your reaction go on purpose. Too often, conversations go south, stories get created and magnified and blown up because we choose to hold on to our reactivity in situations like this instead of simply letting it go. So we're going to choose to let our reaction go on purpose because we can shift gears and take the lessons from our reactions to help us get better, to get better at working with our own emotions, to get better at then having conversations with other folks, get better at moving the work of being very conscious citizens in the world today forward. I'm Dr. Chris Johnson. I'd love to hear what you learned from attending to your emotional triggers and how they impact you, your conversations, and your energy. You can sign up on my website for a free time to do just that. It's called the Executive Energy Audit, and you can find it at q4-consulting.com forward slash executive energy audit. And as you can imagine, we're just scratching the surface here of what it means to be a conscious leader. In the show notes, they'll take you to my website or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. And of course, there's so much more to this topic and I cover a lot of it in my book, The Leadership Pause, that you can find over on Amazon or at your favorite bookseller. In addition to the executive energy audit, you can also head over to the website, again, q4-consulting.com forward slash leadership advantage quiz to get a better feel for how your energy is showing up in your leadership by taking a 10 question quiz. It's kind of fun. As we sign off today, remember that when we're attuned to the moment at hand, present to whatever unfolds, even if it's reactivity, we can make our best contributions. 
This is Power. I'm Rosie Ward, and this is Show Up as a Leader. To learn more, head over to peopleforwardnetwork.com and, of course, hit that follow button.